Uh, as already discussed last time, in communication electronics we frequently need frequency domain filters. Uh, unfortunately, frequency domain filters are limited to what we can build in electronics uh, as resonators, as tuned circuits, uh, uh, and in particular about the Q of the resonators we can obtain in electronics. Uh, for large va larger values of Q, uh, resonators need to be very large, very bulky, very expensive, and uh, on the other hand, still the Q is limited to a few thousand for most practical electrical resonators. Uh, that's the reason why we look at different solutions, and what we look today is at piezoelectric devices, uh, where we obtain a very high Q with mechanical resonators in the mechanical world. And we couple mechanical oscillations uh, with the electrical world through the piezoelectric effect. This is the most uh, frequent way to do it. So, uh, uh <coughs> we are going to look at how to be, uh, use piezoelectric devices. Uh, ag back, uh, we again, uh, most of these devices are made of silicon. And when you t we talk about silicon, silicon is the most abundant material in the Earth's crust. Uh, most people think of silicon only uh, thinking about electronic integrated circuits that use crystal silicon as the active semiconductor and the morphous silicon dioxide as the insulator. Uh, in this way we can build uh, MOS integrated circuits. Yes, but uh, we could also build a computer out of vacuum tubes. It is not impossible, it is not very practical, but it is not impossible. The other use of silicon is less known, and this is a transmission path for communication. As uh, the most efficient uh, wired communication we have today is optical fiber. Uh, optical fiber has quite a low loss, at least compared to the scale we want to perform communication. If we need needed to, scale, uh, to communicate just over a few millimeters, uh, this would not make sense, and if we would need to communicate over, over a million of kilometers in space, this would almost, almost also not make sense. This is for our scale of, mo of more terrestrial use. What we are using here, we are using amorphous, amorphous silicon dioxide. This is silica glass. This is the best material we know for um, for optical fibers to make optical fibers and there is yet a third application most people don't think of at all and that's that is building high q piezoelectric mechanical resonators uh, that are coupled to the electric world through the piezoelectric effect this is done with the crystal uh, crystal form of silicon dioxide or in other words quartz quartz crystal most people even don't think about this yet. This application here has almost no substitute. We could replace, say, we could build uh, our cable communications from copper cables and forget about silicon. They have 100 times more loss, but it can be done. We could build electronic circuits uh, out of vacuum tubes. This can be done. But there is almost no replacement for the high Q of uh, quartz crystals. Where do we need this high Q in communication electronics? Uh, we usually we don't need... Uh, we also build filters out, out of quark crystal. That's not a problem. But the most demanding filter we ever need in electronics is the filter inside an oscillator. Uh, the filter inside an oscillator loop, so this is a, an amplifier with feedback and has a filter in the feedback. This uh, feedback actually defines the shape of the spectral line produced by this electronic oscillator. And there is no perfect electronic oscillator producing just a discrete uh, uh, Dirac function spectral line. All uh, electronic oscillators, not just electronic, also optic oscillator, the same, the same equation apply also to lasers, uh, generate a spectral line of a certain width and certain phase noise sidebands reaching out quite wide up to the thermal noise region. 
uh, we will discuss uh, the Lysenius equation uh, furthermore in one particular section on oscillators so we will have one just one lecture over oscillators and there were there we are going to develop the Lysenius equation describing the uh, phase noise the uh, phase noise spectral relative phase noise spectral density this is L of delta F given by the Lysenius equation and the Lysenius equations we have some physical constants like Boltzmann constant like room temperature but uh, we also have the noise figure of our amplifier uh, the flicker noise corner frequency of our amplifier this is not thermal noise uh, but uh, one very important detail here so delta f is the variable f0 is the central frequency of our oscillator one very important uh, figure here is the loaded q of our resonator here and uh, this loaded Q we can only reach certain values with certain uh, certain implementations of this oscillator for instance an LC tuned resonance circuit can only reach a Q loaded not unloaded but loaded with the amplifier loaded around 30 we can get up, up to around 1000 with an electrical cavity but a quartz crystal a resonator a mechanical resonator coupled to the piezoelectric effect can reach a Q-loaded of 30,000 so we can do much better with the quartz crystal and quartz crystals are nowadays mainly used they are the most important component of oscillators there are, there are other applications of quartz crystals but the most important is the is the oscillator what does the phase noise do to uh, a radio signal uh, with analog radio links uh, we are usually dealing with this spurious residual frequency modulation uh, this is unwanted and it's actually modulated by noise uh, we can get this uh, deviation sigma f here uh, by integrating the uh, relative uh, spectral, no uh, spectral noise density of phase noise spectral uh, spectral density of phase noise by integrating it of over the frequency region of interest for voice communication this is from 50 Hertz to 300 kilohertz and this is actually a noise that adds to our useful signal and this is independent of the distance between the receiver and the transmitter uh, this is just a property of the transmi uh, uh, signal generated by the transmitter itself around our desired carrier uh, this noise in analog radio links limits single side band communication so this is amplitude modulation without carrier with just one side band below 30 megahertz it limits uh, free, uh, narrow band frequency modulated speech uh, to frequencies below 1 gigahertz and this is important for mobile phones this is important for long distance uh, HF communication and it even limits uh, 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 analog uh, frequency modulated picture transmission so television transmission with a bandwidth of 30 megahertz to frequencies below 30 gigahertz so we have uh, uh, since this thing this uh, phase noise actually grows with frequency if we go up here you see that we have frequency squared in the numerator in the the, uh, the denominator of this ratio squared so it grows quickly with frequency and that's the reason why we are limited with the frequencies with uh, digital radio links we use better resonators better resonators to achieve better performance here also digital uh, digital radio links are newer so uh, we are used to to better technology here but even with the better technology uh, we are still limited what what uh, next time we are going to discuss different modulations and an important parameter of a modulation is its constellation constellation pattern what uh, the phase noise causes it causes to rotate left and right this constellation uh, finally leading to errors if these two overlap or if these two overlap we may have transmission errors over here uh, the modulation constellation rotation is given by the unwanted phase modulation uh, that is uh, given by integrating the uh, phase noise relative phase noise spectral density 
over a certain frequency region where the maximum frequency is actually our modulation bandwidth and the minimum frequency is the bandwidth of our carrier recovery circuit where the carrier recovery is still able to work so the carrier recovery cannot be made too fast uh, but it is slow this fre minimal frequency goes down even with a digital radio link where this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, effect applies it applies especially to OFDM to orthogonal frequency division multiplex signals that are very popular today both for broadcast for digital uh, digital television uh, digital video broadcast uh, terrestrial digital video broadcast where frequencies are limited to below 1 gigahertz with a dense OFDM with many many carriers with a coarse OFDM with less carriers we maybe can go up to 10 gigahertz but above 10 gigahertz it becomes very difficult to use OFDM though it may be efficient for its uh, uh, since it is able to uh, uh, defy the uh, multi-path distortion of signals OFDM but OFDM will not work with many carriers on very high frequencies because of this unwanted constellation rotation because the more carriers we have uh, the more sensitive are we to the modulation rotation even a single carrier QPSK is limited to frequencies below 100 gigahertz so uh, we are not really free to choose the modulation uh, as we want because we have this noise this noise that is actually part of our carrier signal and we cannot avoid this phase noise side bands our our carrier and that also limits uh, limits the possibility for different modulations uh, that's a real question today because uh, people are talking lots about 5g communication and 5g may not work at too high frequencies because of phase noise phase noise is the actual physical limit that applies to all communications including 5g so 5g cannot go over physical limits uh, so what is a brief history of quartz crystals uh, in the second half of the 19th century uh, the piezoelectric effect was discovered this piezoelectric effect is uh, very convenient to change mechanical oscillation into electrical oscillation and vice versa but there are also effect other also other effects for instance magnetostriction is also effect an effect that could be used but it's more cumbersome than the cumbersome than the piezoelectric effect piezoelectric effect is really simple to use but the problem was getting large quartz crystals and Giorgio Spezia first developed the hydrothermal growth of synthetic quartz crystal in lab crystals in laboratory but still uh, even if this was done at the beginning of the 20th century still in the first half of the 20th century mainly natural quartz crystals are being used and they are first used in sonar in, uh, for a military purpose for warfare at sea and then they were used in oscillators because the radio communication was not really that developed it did not require yet the the very clean signals we need today for digital radio links uh, uh, the first broadcast transmitter started using quartz crystal oscillators to have a stable frequencies uh, then uh, okay thermally compensated quartz crystal quartz cuts are being developed so if we select the planes we cut a, a, pl a quartz plate out of a single mode crystal we can influence the its thermal thermal coefficients uh, the first clock with a quartz crystal was also developed in the beginning, uh, in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, 80 cut crystals have a very good uh, thermal compensation. We can get, uh, we can remove the linear component, we can remove the square component, and 80 cut crystals usually have a cubic temperature dependence of uh, of its their frequencies. Uh, but uh, even 80 cut before the second world war was not particularly good only after the second world war a high Q high stability 80 cut was developed for the crystals as we know them today most crystals as we know them today are 80 cut high Q high stability uh, crystals 
Uh, also in the, fifth, uh, in the middle of the 20th century, the first synth artificial synthetic quartz crystals became available, uh, replacing the natural crystal, which was not repeatable, which was hardly available just in some countries like Brazil. And then uh, work progressed on developing uh, better crystals for particular uses, say, uh, the first uh, temperature compensated crystal oscillators using electronics to compensate the remaining cubic dependence of an 80 cut was described. Very small crystals for very low frequencies like tuning fork quartz crystals for wristwatches were developed. And for the high stability, uh, SC cut crystals were, div uh, were first predicted and then verified to have the highest possible quality, uh, high possible unloaded and loaded quality of the resonators used in oscillators. So this is actually the best oscillators are made of out of SC cut crystals, but SC cut crystals have other problems. They are difficult to use. So uh, discussing mechanical resonators, we have to uh, discuss mechanical oscillations and mechanical waves. So mechanics is much more complicated really than electrical engineering. Uh, it requires much more mathematics. We have uh, many more different waves in, uh, uh, me uh, at, uh, as mechanical waves than we have as electric waves. Maxwell equations are really very simple compared to the equations we used in mechanics. What we know about mechanics, the velocity of waves is in solids and also in liquids is uh, uh, a few kilometers per second. Uh, this makes our devices of practical size. Even uh, mechanical resonators uh, at higher, or, uh, higher order modes are quite small, so they can be built inside our equipment. What we have in mechanical waves, we have pressure waves and pressure waves are primary waves because in the case of an earthquake, they, def uh, they arrive first. They propagate uh, in gases, liquids, and solids. So in all possible media they propagate. And these devices are called bulk acoustic wave devices using such waves. Then we have shear waves uh, that are uh, also called secondary waves. Uh, secondary waves, uh, they only propagate in solids. Shear waves also uh, arrive second uh, in the case of earthquakes. They also are used to form bulk acoustic wave devices. And then in mechanics, we can also have waves at the interface of two different media. For instance, on the surface of solid, we have surface acoustic waves. Uh, these are also used in our electronic devices. So let's see what can we do with uh, piezoelectric devices, what kind of piezoelectric devices can we make? We can uh, make piezoelectric devices oscill oscillating, vi vibrating in different modes, like flexure mode for very low frequencies, length mode also for low frequencies, uh, area expansion mode is also length for length mode. We have thickness shear mode. This is the most important uh, mode of oscillation, not just for ceramic filters, also for quartz crystals. Thickness shear mode is the most important thing. Why is it is so important? Because shear waves do not propagate in gases. So if we want a high Q resonator, we don't want the mechanical energy propagating in the surroundings. So if you have just a length mode or a flexor mode quartz crystal, then uh, we need to install this crystal in a vacuum envelope. While thickness shear mode devices can operate in air at ambient pressure because shear waves cannot propagate in air. We have other expansion mode, thickness expansion mode. We use thickness expansion mode in, uh, uh, in uh, film bulk acoustic wave filters. We will see that later on today. Uh, we have surface acoustic wave uh, for surface acoustic wave, both uh, resonators and filters. We will also discuss this at the end of the lecture today. Uh, we also have other other kind of waves for resonators also built on ceramic. The velocities are between 3 and 12 kilometers per second, the velocities of these waves in ceramic. Uh, they are also in the same range, around, uh, slightly above 3 kilometers per second in quartz crystal. 
What is quartz? First, uh, we are dealing here with natural quartz, with natural occurring in nature. In nature, we can find uh, in mines, especially in Brazil, we can find uh, uh, natural quartz crystals of very large size. Quartz as a crystal has a melting point of 1670 degrees centigrade, but above 573 degrees centigrade, it changes the crystal phase. Alpha quartz at low temperatures goes to um, beta quartz at high temperature. Beta quartz has no uh, piezoelectric properties, so it's useless for us at high temperatures. Quartz is only useful at low temperatures and at this low temperature below 570 degrees centigrade alpha quartz has two two uh, two mirror forms the right-handed and the left-handed quartz uh, of course the piezoelectric effect the sign of the piezoelectric effect flips when we go from one kind of quartz to the other kinds kind of quartz. piezoelectric is only the alpha quartz uh, it has a quartz has a very high mechanical q uh, it allows to build mechanical resonators of a Q more than 1 million, but then we have to use this quartz in our electric, electronic circuit. We apply electrodes to the quartz, we have uh, surrounding uh, material like uh, air, uh, so this, this Q mechanical, very high mechanical Q is decreased by side effects to uh, about a factor of 10 to up to 100. In nature, this quartz grows very, very slow. Water and salt dissolve salt at high pressure, 1000 bar, deep below the Earth's crust, at high pressures, at high temperatures, around 300, 400 degrees centigrade, and it takes about 1000 years for such a crystal to grow. So that's very, very slow. Uh, in natural quartz, both alpha forms are present, right handed and the left handed. Uh, and they are also present in one single crystal. So my one single crystal may be may exhibit twinning. So we may have uh, the mirror versions of both crystal forms inside a single crystal. Uh, natural quartz has impurities, may have inclusions, and one final problem is availability. Where can we buy? When we can we get natural quartz? It's available in some countries, like in Brazil, where other countries do not have it available. For instance, Germany could not use quartz crystal devices in the, uh, in the Second World War because they had no access to natural quartz crystals. And a synthetic quartz crystal was not available yet in the Second World War. Uh, this is a historical quartz resonator, uh, very famous FT243. Uh, that has this small quartz plate installed between two metal plates. Uh, this uh, metal plates only press to the quartz plate at the at the uh, at the in the corners. So the central part of this plate may oscillate. We apply uh, an external voltage to this plate to excite the quartz plate. Uh, besides these two metal plates, there is a spring to hold together these things. Uh, these plates are connected to these brass electrodes to get to the output pins here. Uh, this is the complete package and this is also a rubber gasket to seal the package so that moisture doesn't get inside. This is the top plate stating the frequency and the channel of the radio. So this is uh, Second World War technology really. Second World War, where there were many companies in the United States manufacturing crystals because in the United States had access to the Brazil mines, uh, mines in Brazil producing manufacturing quartz, while Germans did not have this possibility. Uh, today, uh, quartz, all quartz after about 1950, 1950-1960, so after the 50, after the middle of the 20th century, uh, the synthetic quartz growth was perfectioned, the industrial synthetic, in autoclaves. Autoclave is a furnace with uh, high internal pressure, temperature uh, around 400, 300, 400 degrees centigrade. Uh, quartz as uh, raw material is uh, uh, brought here in the form of sand. Sand, quartz sand, 
this is uh, natural material and this is solved in a solution of water and uh, some caustic solution uh, of sodium here and it's deposited onto the seed crystals to grow such big uh, quartz crystals the growth in the z direction so in the thickness direction of the quartz is much faster than the growth in the length in such an autograph yet such a hydrothermal growth takes lots of time today the industrial process to grow quartz it goes from three months and above so in three months we get the first good crystals but if we want really high quality crystals say for the high quality oscillators we need to slow down the growth by lower temperature and wait more but that of course uh, costs money this is actually the holder that goes inside the autoclave and holds here it holds the seed crystals the seed crystals are vertical plates that accumulate mainly in the thickness direction they accumulate new material out of the out of uh, out of the vapor phase solution here in water vapor and sodium uh, sodium sodium solution how does uh, such a crystal look like this is the cr a crystal i have here you can see the hooks that uh, were used to attach the seed the seed crystal was actually just a thin plate and this thin plate was actually growing in the lateral direction here uh, here you see the size this thing 15 centimeters of length of this uh, artificially grown quartz crystals this quartz crystal weighs almost two kilograms and the cost of this is around 30 dollars so it's not a particularly expensive material because temperatures are not that large as when we are processing silicon or other semiconductors here we have hydrothermal growth at low temperature but still very high pressure the surface is not particularly smooth but the crystal inside this surface is almost perfect and this crystal is then sliced into thin plates to make out uh, resonators so uh, plates can be cut out of this single single uh, quartz crystals in many different ways here i just showed a few examples you can get many of this in literature because there are many different possible cuts for us the most important is 80 cut 80 cut here or 80 cut here or 80 cut here depicted in a slightly different way or 80 cut here 80 cut, 80 cut is doubly rotated so we change, adjust both angles uh, both angles uh, uh, both angles both theta and phi angles we adjust uh, in, in 80 cut and uh, by adjusting both angles we can uh, uh, remove the linear uh, frequency dependence of temperature and the quadratic frequency dependence of, dependence of temperature so the only the cubic remains we can make really stable uh, crystals uh, out of uh, by doubly rotating by precisely adjusting the angles under which we rotate the crystals we we cut we rotate the crystal when we cut out the crystal plates there are other cuts for instance the tuning fork for wrist watches has a different angles than uh, uh, than than the than the other cuts uh, BT cut is also quite popular in some oscillator BT cut only has uh, a parabolic uh, temperature dependence so we only compensate for the linear temperature dependence in BT cut and BT cut is usually used uh, with crystals for crystals overs while crystals operating at room temperature are usually 80 cut the most popular there are of course many other possible cuts of crystals uh, BT cut was inst for instance used in s during the second world war to make crystal oscillators for the US Army uh, how do we find the axis of a crystal we use uh, Bragg diffraction we use Bragg diffraction on crystals and Bragg diffraction uh, follows exactly the molecules ordered along the axis of the crystal follows exactly the uh, diffraction and uh, uh, so by having a narrow beam of x-rays we can look at the uh, Bragg 
diffraction pattern. We uh, take a picture of the Bragg diffraction by moving uh, Geiger tube uh, around our crystals and find the diffracted rays from this crystal. And we use an X-ray source, a Röntgen tube, with a copper anode with a wavelength of 0.154 nanometers. This is uh, produced by the copper anode. Still, this spectral line of the X-ray source is not particularly narrow. So we use yet another crystal as a monochromator crystal. A monochromator so that uh, we select out of this uh, spectral line just some rays that pass in a particular direction using a lead shield. A lead shield, lead is a good shield material for X-rays. Uh, 50 kilovolts of plate voltage here at the X-ray tube and uh, with a cold cathode usually but can be also a warm cathode but cold cathode could also be used and uh, with this uh, opening here with aperture here and here we can select just a narrow portion of this beam we can make this spectral line uh, X-ray spectral line much narrower so that we can much more accurately measure our sample crystal and find its crystal axis inside this crystal and we find them by measuring this radiation using a geiger miller tube uh, this, that's how we find precisely the axis because we will see that uh, very small small uh, small errors in these uh, angles here cause very large frequency errors in the crystal. So uh, the temperature dependence is very bad if these angles are not exact. So we really need accuracy here and that's the reason why we use uh, X-rays and Bragg diffraction of X-rays. Uh, again, when we cut our crystal, say, uh, we, uh, what, uh, th we already had a similar picture above here but this was more general for ceramic, also ceramic resonators, not just quartz crystals. Also using them not just as resonators, as buzzers, as loudspeakers, ceramic uh, piezoelectric loudspeakers. So uh, this is maybe more accurate for quartz crystal, this uh, drawing here. We have tu a tuning fork uh, for the lowest frequencies, like uh, wristwatches, selecting the angle to have the lowest temperature dependence for wristwatches. We have flexure modes. Uh, this have, these crystals have to be installed in vacuum uh, to avoid uh, losing uh, losing uh, energy through uh, propagation of acoustic waves in free air. Uh, we have extension modes, uh, phase shear modes, but the most important for us is shear mode, thickness shear mode. Uh, the thickness uh, we have this wave uh, propagating across the thickness of our quartz plate. And this is the AT card. We can use the AT card both in the also in the fundamental mode and also in overtone modes for better performance. So we have uh, we have many different possibilities here in the thickness shear. For us, uh, the thickness shear wave is the most important selection for quartz crystals, and the AT cut. AT cut is the most important thing we can uh, get. Uh, we, we should use out of a quartz crystal. So these are uh, 80 cut, 80 cut plates of modern crystal. How are they made? An 80 cut plate, these have a round shape. Uh, they may also be rectangular, but a round shape uh, usually performs better in the in the regarding spurious uh, oscillation modes. So a round shape, it has silver plated electrodes, maybe also gold plated electrodes like here. Uh, we usually have two electrodes applying the electric field only in the region where the electrodes overlap. And uh, now this plate, actually its thickness, it's very thin. The plate is maybe here five to 10 millimeters diameter, but only uh, 100 micrometers thick. And this thickness actually defines the frequencies, the oscillation frequencies of our crystal. Uh, the overlap regions, by selecting the overlap, the size of the overlap, overlap region. Uh, so this was, in fact, the crystal developed, if I go back on my pictures, this was the crystal developed 
1949 high q high stability atk so this is actually the crystals we have today not not the second world war crystal but the crystal as quartz crystal as we crystals as we know them today uh, by selecting the size of this overlapping area we can also influence the unwanted resonant modes because there are many possible resonant modes of this quartz plate uh, this one is a little bit broken here this is already broken uh, but it's what is it's detached this here was soldered on this holder uh, besides uh, single resonators we may have double resonators and couple, couple double resonators so this uh, sample here is a monolithic uh, crystal filter with two mechanically coupled resonators and uh, w they have one common electrode here and uh, each section has its own excitation electrode so for instance the signal enters here um, uh, first makes uh, the first resonator to oscillate then the first resonator is mechanically coupled to the second resonator and the second resonator is piezoelectrically coupled to the uh, electrode outside here so this has also a three point attachment this have only two point uh, two attachment points this has a three point attachment because we need three electrical connection to such a signal so this is how uh, modern day quartz look like these quartz may work uh, in uh, in air may work uh, in say in, in air at one bar without degrading the q of this crystal that still may may get the q the unloaded q may get above above 30000 here with such quartz plates uh, this is uh, actually a relatively cheap device a very high performance resonator to build our high performance oscillators so shear oscillation what does that mean uh, shear oscillation means that move moving uh, the plate is moving in this direction left and right here and this is the thickness the thickness d defines the frequency if uh, we know the velocity of the wave and the velocity uh, for thickness shear waves in quartz is 3.32 kilometers per second if we divide the, this velocity by twice the thickness the thickness should be half of the acoustic wavelength in quartz we get the resonant frequencies so a typical uh, typical crystal we have uh, 100 micrometers here of thickness for a 16 megahertz uh, fundamental frequency 50 megahertz third overtone and so on for the higher overtone modes of course the higher are the overtone modes the lower the piezoelectric coupling here we have very strong piezoelectric coupling where here uh, we have only piezoelectric coupling in this region and in this region and, and everything else subtracts, uh, subtracts out so it's very difficult to couple the seventh overtone inside a crystal uh, if we look um, so this is are the oscillation of our crystal uh, of our uh, crystal the crystal has uh, usually uh, silver electrodes there may be also gold electrodes or other metals plated on top and on the bottom of each crystal plate because of these electrodes the overtone resonances are not exact harmonics of the fundamental frequency uh, because this uh, this actually uh, this metal electrodes imply a mechanical load and this mechanical load actually shifts all the resonances uh, but it shifts more the fundamental than the third or the fifth or the seventh overtone so the major shift of the electrodes is the, is the fundamental frequency these electrodes also dec uh, decrease the Q of the resonator so uh, the Q of the resonator will not be as good as that of quartz itself the Q of, of the resonator will be actually lower here uh, so but we need the electrodes to get our electrical signal into the mechanical oscillation inside our AT cut plate uh, we should always be aware that any resonator has higher order resonant modes not just mechanical resonators like quartz but also electrical resonators have higher order modes but mechanical higher, o o higher order modes are much more complicated uh, than uh, electrical order modes so mechanics is much mathematically much more complicated to handle than electrical modes what is the an 80 plate uh, equivalent electric circuit this electric circuit simplified that we only have one 
one mode, uh, one the fundamental mode uh, uh, per width of the plate. We can also make higher order transversal modes, and we are not dealing with them yet. Uh, we are only dealing with, with the most important fundamental transversal mode. Um, so the the mode that only has uh, its oscillation across the thickness of the plate, and this is what is mainly visible to most people. We have uh, the capacitance of the electrode. So. Uh, quartz is a dielectric and we have about 3 picofarads of capacitors this may be go get up to 10 picofarads depending on the size depending on the size and thickness of the plate but then we have resonances uh, so piezoelectric coupling in silicon is very small uh, since piezoelectric coupling is very small the capacitors will be very small and the inductors will be the, the uh, the equivalent inductors of these uh, resonances will be very large, uh, but getting to the radio frequency. So a typical thickness of a, of a plated uh, uh, of a uh, quartz plate of 100 micrometers thickness. Uh, this uh, plate will resonate at s slightly above 16 megahertz on the fundamental mode, and um, what is interesting uh, that the coupling decays with the higher the higher the overtone mode the coupling de decays and decays exactly inversely proportional to frequencies so all resonances have approximately the same the same equivalent inductivity of this oscillator but of course uh, the higher the frequency the smaller the capacitor and here the capacitors decays really quickly these are femtofarads 10 to the minus 15 farads 10 to the minus 15 so this 1000 uh, times less than a picofarad what uh, these resonances have they also have a finite q a finite q means that to rep in order to represent them we have uh, uh, to install a uh, to have to include a series resistor in the equivalent circuit and the series resistor is also uh, uh, growing with frequency but it's not growing very fast so uh, crystal plate usually achieve its maximum uh, its maximum q at the third overtone maybe the fifth overtone uh, the q is lower, uh, lower at the first overtone because of the electrodes we had here and the Q also decreases the, with uh, with the overtone is too high, also because of increasing losses in the in the quartz plate. Why do we have only odd mode overtones, third, fifth, and seventh? Why we don't have a second overtone or a fourth overtone or the sixth overtone? Well, the reason is very simple. It's the piezoelectric coupling. The piezoelectric coupling only works when this slow this is has this uh, piezoelectric effect here has a different sign of this one here so here we have different signs uh, here we have different signs but uh, we do have in fact really mechanical resonances we also have uh, even mode resonances the fourth the second the fourth the sixth but they do not exhibit any piezoelectric coupling so we only have piezoelectric coupling for the odd mode overtones we do not have any piezoelectric coupling for the uh, even modes and that's the reason why we are not never talking about uh, even uh, even mode overtones only odd mode overtones we have usually the third overtone is that the one that provides the best electrical performance maybe the fifth so uh, high performance oscillator will use third or fifth overtone crystals uh, to get the lowest possible phase noise in our electronic oscillators they all are always odd mode you see we have one three five seven we never have two four and six so if we look at the admittance of uh, uh, an 80 plate crystal uh, the admittance is uh, why i'm calculating the admittance because i have a parallel connections of several branches here and uh, mostly the admittance we see this plate capacitance so this uh, uh, the plated electrodes uh, the plated electrodes simply is an admittance that grows with frequency here as the admittance of the capacitor C0 
but when we reach a resonant frequency then we go around a circle in the admittance uh, admittance diagram so this is a real part of the admittance imaginary part of the admittance we have a huge uh, circle for the fundamental mode we have less of a coupling for the third overtone even less coupling for the fifth overtone and even less coupling for the seventh overtone resonance uh, so here we have limits with we are limited with our coupling so uh, it's very easy to use the crystal in the fundamental mode because there is a large change of the admittance close to the frequency so uh, we go slowly up here then we quickly turn around the circle close to the fundamental resonance and then we proceed along the uh, vertical line here again we quickly turn around the blue, blue circles around the third overtone and so on so these changes are very quick compared to this slow growth of the uh, capacitor admittance now uh, from this uh, diagram here we see that uh, uh, we see that uh, it, it will be very easy to use the fundamental motor resonance and in fact many simple circuits like a microprocessor having a clock crystal oscillator uh, will usually use the crystal in the fundamental mode third and fifth overtones may provide a better Q may provide lower phase noise but at the expense of a much more complicated oscillator circuit uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, this is the basics we discussed the basics of the uh, mechanical resonators here but unfortunately uh, things are not that simple as described here we do not only have simple thickness resonances as, depi as depicted on this picture but we may have also other modes in the transversal direction we only uh, talked about th the thickness here about the vertical dimension here of the crystal plate here we also have other modes in the transversal dimensions of uh, the plate and uh, here are a few pictures of these modes using x-rays so this was the fundamental mode these are higher order modes uh, we will discuss this uh, next hour so next hour we have to discuss these parasitic effects besides the uh, fundamental uh, fundamental uh, resonances so fundamental third overtone fifth overtone seventh overtone the, just the thickness mode these are just thickness mode but uh, really the crystal if we look into detail also has also has uh, transversal modes and those do cause problems not as much in simple oscillators like a, a Quartz, uh, quartz clock crystal for a microprocessor but in more demanding applications like uh, frequency filters then we have a problem and we will discuss this special uh, this more complicated resonances but this is all mechanics this is all solutions of uh, the wave equations uh, of a, uh, of the oscillations of a thick uh, thick plate in mechanics so mechanics mathematically is much more complicated we will discuss this unharmonics next hour to see more details about quartz plates.